Hello and welcome to Burning Questions. For whatever reason, I've messaged and called the great Andy Gath and can't get hold of it. Hopefully catch up. You know, Molsey, I welcome you first. Is he like Paul Man? Would he be sleeping with Catch a Wave in the barn? And I don't think Andy would do that. I think I Andy. I think Andy, with his back problems and all the rest, wants a very comfortable bed. Surely. Well, not after last week, will he? He wouldn't be sleeping with him, would he? He might well, be sleeping with Jakarta after the way it went at Geelong. Is he in Jakarta? Is that why we can't get hold of him? Well, maybe. He's probably sleeping with Jakarta. It was pretty yeah. good. Tell me, Molsey, it's been a while since we've had you on Burning Questions. You are, you've obviously uh, made friends with Elon Musk, and now that you are travelling throughout the cosmos, where are you exactly, and what planet are you travelling to? Uh, I'm on the uh, Omega-27 planet uh, in the, the, the far long lost galaxy just around the corner from Chewbacca. I don't know whether that was a good effort or a bad effort from my no, I'm going I'm to give it six and a half out of ten at best. Danny, great to catch up with you. You're, you're on your way to Mildura, but I'll tell you what, just to make sure everyone is not worried, you're not driving, you, you've pulled up, yes? So everything's yeah, not. Nah, nah, pulled over, even turned back towards Hopeton to get a bit better service. But, yeah, maybe Andy's like me. Maybe once you'd lost your phone, which I reckon you did that once other time when I've been on this, he might have said, well, this isn't going to work properly. Oh, well, I've lost my phone a couple of times. I know where it is. I know where it is. I bought a sausage roll. Yeah. And a couple of, a couple of uh, things to help with my breathing at the uh, 7-Eleven and left the phone there. But I've identified it. It is safe, apparently. It is not in captivity as I was for a couple of weeks. Johnny, like, I don't want to give away your personal details, but you're not a man short of a quid. And you've got some really good horses and you're still travelling the truck up to Mildura. you you you're a sicko, aren't you? What's going on? Well, I sort of got a few that they either got to go to Melton, and they're probably not quite there, and and then I had to put a two-year-old in. So he had his first start two weeks ago, and then it sort of was too close to Vic Fred, and there's no other two-year-olds this time of the year, so I'll give him another run and just put four in and go tonight, and then tomorrow night, and then that'll be it for the week until next week, I'd say. Was that a whack for the programming team? You're not getting enough two-year-old races. Fair enough. I, no, don't worry. I, I, I like to act as a conduit. I'll let them know. I'll let them know you're upset. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a day, mate. It's a day, mate. I'm not going any night meets anymore. Felvo Fruits. Um, they grow top, like, not big quality grapes, top quality grapes on the farms of Weeman and Lipperoo, which I frequent most weekends, to be honest. If I'm not working at the trots, I go to either Weeman or Lipparoo, and they work very closely together with Premier Farms Australia. These table grapes are delivered to customers all over the world. You can go to Bulgaria, you can go to Nigeria, wherever you want to go. You'll find the grapes. Remember, everyone, eating grapes is good for you. Question number one. For you, is it done? Does Raw hand to think the way he did just two runs back? Or with these being semis, will Juanita have a crack? Now, I know there was a uh, situation a couple of starts back where Raw for Roscoe drew inside of you, and you might have been out of cross, but you were able to, you know, happy to just balance up, and you eventually assumed the front. Are you, give me a percentage out of 100, which is how we do things normally, how confident you are of finding the top? I'd like to think, um, say, 85%. I don't know if I've got – I think we've pretty much got the same gate speed. If not, Rorda Roscoe might have a bit better, but I'd just like to think that she'd like to take a six and it's a semi-final, not get in a war, and I think, yeah, I'd like to think if I just put a bit of pressure on that I'd roll to the front again. So, I mean, a very, very smart form analyst, Miles. <laughs> Identified, I think, is a – High quality. You remember this, don't you, Danny? Like, you know, you know, of like, you, you know, leave Molsey out of it for a second. You know, I, I identified, I think, quite early in the piece, and you're looking like you don't remember. Try and remember. Oh, uh, like, there was a race where it got beaten by the stable mate, I believe. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, no, I do recall. And I was like, oh, actually, you had the kid on it that night. Yep. And I think the kid might have. Forgotten there was a chance to win there for a second, and he probably could have won that night. But I'll tell you what. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Dave. I'm sure I take the call from Andy. 
It's had to talk many. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Burning Questions, hello, are you there? Uh, you, you're late to the party. Exactly. Oh, okay, okay. You're you're otherwise indisposed. Okay. No, no. How how how, Malsey? What's more yeah. important than burning questions for him right now? All right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll go back. Since we're live now, uh, I'll, we'll go. I'll go back to doing your job for you. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye. Uh, sorry, Andrew's otherwise indisposed. Did Bobby. you did you access the way he was indisposed? Uh, I might have. Might be your story for another day. It's a PG show. Oh, I, or I'm confused, but that's this is good TV. This is, this is good. Um, um, anyway, I loved I think early on, and but I do think a dollar thirty, Danny, is pretty crazy, isn't it? Because if you don't find the fr if you don't find the front, are you still very confident of winning? Oh, I still think he can. Um, it's probably you know. Um, Roscoe put in a pretty good run last week sitting outside me and pulled a little bit hard. She said she pushed him out of the gate and then he got um, pushed, pulling a bit. So he probably kept the pace rolling. But look, I suppose I haven't sat outside the front on him for a while. Um, probably when you, going back to when you said how good he was, I probably thought, oh yeah, but probably I did give him two weeks off. And then when I brought him back from that two weeks, he's gone to another level, which has been a good result, really. I think you've learnt your lesson, Dunny. If I tell you they're good, they're good. Um, Halsey, I'm glad, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I went to Dunny first because you were shaking your head. I, I did have a big opinion of this all. Um, talk me through it. There are some – I know semi-finals mean it's hard for horses poorly drawn, but you look at interest free and what he's done. He, he's placed in a couple of country cups in Kafaji. Mm. Give me your I'm sponsored by Sid Crane. I'll throw a spanner in the works. I think Kafaji will cost a lot of them. Who? Kafaji. If Moran wants to set it alight, I think it can cost a lot of them. Nah, not a chance. Whoa, there we go. <laughs> oh, well, I don't think. Like, yeah, on his gate speed the other day, unless they didn't use him, but, yeah. I, 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 I made a statement. doesn't possess a heap of gate speed. I made a statement one night when I said Nag would cross and Nag gets out real good. Nag couldn't get across it, so. Um, yeah. I think if, if they want to really light him up off the arm, they can. To get him forward. But uh, either way, if he, even if he does get the front, the front here for you, maybe. No, it's far too to cross. But he, I'll tell you what, if Molly's right, it'll be a great moment on Bernie Questions because I don't think anybody's factored that possibility in. And and Danny's also shot back. <laughs> shot <sports laughs> back big No, there's no chance at 11. And you know what? Danny's talking about... Um, gate speed and form in a way that I don't normally hear him talk about it. So, and now he's disappeared for a brief moment, even though I promise you he is stationary. He'll be back in the seat, no doubt about it. Um, oh, no. Uh, Blake just pulled up and then I had a phone call. I thought, Sorry, you, got, and I was down. I thought you got so angry with Milesy that you, 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 you were going to abandon the show. And without <laughs> Andy, no, no, no. who's otherwise indisposed doing something profligate, nefarious that we don't even know about. Nate's involved. Trots. Um, can the state's most brilliant and successful training team, uh, that's Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin, wave their wand with uh, Wardan and new, uh, Renewal so they can deem? So they've redeemed themselves. So look at this, Milesy. We've got a situation where we've seen there was a period with Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin where their horses were turning up first up and winning every time, and sometimes winning very dominantly and maybe not going as well later in their preparations. Now, they're seeming to improve vastly second up from a break, but renewal started at $1.22 in its heat, and we know Ward and Buddy uh, is the only horse to beat Storm Rider. Can they improve enough, or do we look at them and say, let's risk them in their respective semifinals of the Vic Bread Super Series on Saturday night, or tonight, or tomorrow, or whenever you're watching Burning Questions? Just purely on a form line uh, with uh, Renewal, she couldn't chase down Elusive last week, and my fairly Destiny Stride handled Elusive at Maryborough, whether it wasn't quite on its game or not, I don't know, but I would have thought that um, taking that form line, Renewal's going to struggle to chase down Destiny Stride, and 
hopefully I'll be in front and it's drawn the back line. So that gives me a bit of a break on it at some stage. So I'm sort of hopeful that I can win that race. Uh, Ward and Buddy's drawn drawn bad, but, um, yeah, he looked something out of the box early. And uh, I do think he could probably turn the tables on him. So I'm tipping Destiny Stride, and I've been, I, I thought I was being a bit conservative. There's another horse from more than you that you might know a little bit about that's got very good gait speed, but you're, you're hoping to be in front. Oh, look, if I think you're going to be in front, you're $2.70 at the moment, I'd be very confident. So are you very confident? Stop texting while we're doing burning questions. I'm reading the form, Jason. I'm trying to work out who you're saying. I'm trying to get Andy about it and, and trying to get FaceTime, whatever he's doing, so you can look at it. That... Well, we don't have memories. We've got other things to do, Jason, too, like whatever Andy's doing. And me, I've got to read the form while you're talking. Rubbish. Sorry, I mean, he's uh, a... And that's right, Miles. He sent the questions to me 10 minutes before I leave. Then I can't <laughs> find him again. I haven't looked at the form guide yet, and I'm going to try and work it out. <laughs> Not look like a total idiot. <laughs> oh, you're copying and pasting here, Joe Bond. You guys are okay? Well, are both of you all right? Like, can you, can you, like, can you settle down a little bit and just sort of enjoy yourselves? You're on burning questions. This is. Oh, no, I'm having a ball. Hey, just, <laughs> hey, hey, you're both smiling, so let's all. You know what? Let's all just be friends and answer <laughs> the bloody questions, please. That's the right. Well I'm pretty sure I'll be in front. Okay. And if I if I am in front, I'm going to be very very hard to beat. What price should you be if you're in front? Even money. I was hoping for more than that, to be honest. Uh, Sorry, honey. I was hoping for like a dollar fifty. I was hoping we're, to be clarity. We're sponsored by TAB, aren't we? So we can't bet in the run. I'll tell you what. If you can bet in, the, you can, you definitely can't bet in the run. Um, Danny, your thoughts on these yeah. questions? War, uh, Wardan Buddy and Renewal? Oh, I just think, I think Miles, that's right. I had a quick look at that form when I could sort of remember the question and thought, yeah, no, nah, Miles is in front. Wardan Buddy, it's out the back. It's probably got to do a bit of work to get into it. So I think, yeah, like, I'm going confident with Miles. Read the form. Check. Yep. No, I'm ready to go. I'll give you a tip. Um, more sponsors. Where are they? We're going to talk about more AV in a moment, but the next sponsor is Sulky App. The new Newenbergs, don't we love them? Combining the power of results and horse sectionals with Sulky App, you now have access to gate speed, swooper, ability, and behaviour ratings. I would rate both of your behaviour ratings at the moment relatively marginal, although Dunny's, you know, Molsey's a consistent smart aleck. So, Dunny, you're okay. Most of you, you won't be outside the draw after this. Never miss right. a trainer, driver, or gear change. Sulky App is a form guide revolution. Sign up at sulky. How much do you two look at the sectionals, by the way? Because this has been a little bit of a revolution. I am not. I don't get addicted to them, but I know a lot of uh, trainers and drivers like to have a look at the sectionals. Milesy, do you do you take much notice of them now that they're freely and readily available? Actually, like what you just said, I'm not addicted to them, Jace. No, I, it, the, the, the conditions change so much. We can go to Kilmore Trials on a Tuesday afternoon and run a mile and two four and trial super and go back to Kilmore three weeks later and go 159 and say, oh, well, it was just basic. So more about what they're running against rather than what uh, what they're actually running. I reckon Dunny is a bloke who goes back. You know what I reckon? I reckon, Dunny, tell me if I'm right. Now, come on, work with me here. Have you ever thought a horse has gone really poor and you've been disappointed and gone home and then you've chucked the lappy up on the iPad once you've gotten back and thought, I don't like based on those sectionals? Yeah, no, I definitely have done that a little bit. Maybe thought, oh, they could have been closer, but because it does, does, you know, it just becomes a, you know, impossibility. And I think sometimes you've seen that, like with Catch a Wave and horses like that, where you thought, oh, they've been a bit average. But then when you've looked at the sectionals, they've gone off the planet. Well, Andy's not here, so I'm going to say, you know, catch a wave apparently has a virus. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not. He, he I'm might not. have got crushed, crushed into submission. Is that a possibility, Andy? I'm being, I'm being aggressive towards Andy now because he's not here because he's otherwise indisposed, but hopefully he's having a good time. Um, 
Milesy, will a moray sticky gait preclude her from success, or should she just remind us that she's better than the rest? So this is the race of the night, in my opinion. So it's the uh, it's one of the semi-finals for the four-year-old mares, and I'm looking at Encipher even and saying, well, a moray Vita has beaten Encipher in a feature series, a Vic Bread, as a matter of fact, and I'm. It's a very good race. It's a sticky gate. It's semi-finals. You don't have to win. You only have to qualify. But I think the, what I saw from Amore Vita last start, I think she'll find a way to win. What do you think? One thing I am absolutely certain on it is the best year of four-year-old mares in the history of ever. There has never been a better year of four-year-old mares. What are in, they the in Cypher, Amore Vita, and there's one horse in this race that will improve. Fiamma, I think Fiamma is one of the most amazing moving athletes I have ever seen. In saying that, I think Amoro Vita probably sits outside and beats her, but it'll be a great battle down the straight. So, let me be back in a second. Um, you believe this is better than. So, we were all talking about the ladies in red generation as being the best generation of all time. Yeah. And this is better. I think this is better. I think this is better than that crop. So very quickly before we get to Dunny. Probably for volume. Probably for there was there was yeah. the three fillies that year. This year I reckon there's probably six or seven. Well there was treachery, there was Beach Life, there was uh Joanna, there was Ladies of Red. So there was a few, but like quickly well Dunny, I'll ask you the question. Are we moving? So I've written a couple of articles about this recently. Obviously in thoroughbred racing we've had the mirrors. Dominate and be the heroes, Mackay Bediva and uh, Black Caviar and Wings. Are we getting to a point where there's more of a compression between the best females and the best males, or is Molesy right and this is just a – we've just had a couple of freak generations? Oh, I think, you know, I think this year probably is like the mares is real strong, whereas, you know, like I think I'm lucky going into this series, the four-year-olds, you know, even though there's a couple that probably could have been there that aren't in there, catch a wave. But the four-year-old Colts is probably a bit light on on talent. You know, we have only got one of Emma Stewart to, to fight against, which often that's not the issue. And but you know, more of Vita, like you know, that running Queensland was huge, and a run the other night. And I think like you know, little Fiamma, she got pulling hard and still probably did well to finish as close as she did. So that was like that was a huge run. Do I ask you both? I'll ask you, Dunny. You only get to train one. And this sounds ridiculous after a horse who's just won the Eureka. Would you have a Moray Vita or in Cypher? In Cypher. Mosey? Mosey! Go on, Slate. Is he okay? No, he doesn't look okay, does he? I mean, if, you, uh, if I was a doctor, I would say he doesn't look okay. He might do it. Molsey! It's got him on the blink anyway, hasn't it? We'll get him back in a second. There's no doubt. I'll tell you what, while I've got you alone, you and you alone, probably a couple of other questions here. So, does Hot Deal qualify, Tony? Worst luck, he could be fall back the fence. He's, um, he had a little accident, kicked up and um, got his leg over the jogger and then had to cut the, get the, go down, get the grinder and cut his leg out. Or cut the steel to get him out. I bought a new chopper which hasn't arrived yet after that. And that was, I was taking him to, going to take him to Tassie for that race, but he's just been rushed back a little bit and was probably not as good as he should be the first two runs. But I think I've got him a bit better as of this week and then go into the final. But yeah, he's got to, got to have a bit of luck to get through, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, he will. Yeah. And, and I think it's better. I think. There was probably not much between them. Hot when they were racing together, yeah. hot deal was better. Somebody knows. Was, no, so. but I think I need, I think now even a hot, um, he's probably just that bit better trier. Even though some people said he needs to learn to race, but he's sort of a bit inclined to go to the front, relax, and then get going at the, you know, get to going down the back, and then he sort of half hits a turn and goes for home, which is a. You know what I like about him, whereas Hot Deal, you've got to be probably chasing him a little bit all the way. But then, you know, he's hard, hadn't missed a place for a long time. So he's a good, honest little horse, too. All right. You know, this is a nice, exciting uh, burning question. I think Molesy did the right thing. I think he got out and he's trying to get back in. But, I mean, during the course, I might I might get back to him in a second. But 
beforehand, I want to know where little Louis will end up from his pole marking drawer in his semi final of the Big Bread Super Series, please, Dunny. I've got some time alone with you. That's what that's well, all I've ever have, wanted. I've probably got to do me form a little bit. I sometimes think that if you push too hard to hold the favourites back, which I could hold the front, I think, mm -hmm. but then that can take it out of you for the finish. Whereas I might be better off three back the fence just as qualify. So, um, you know, and that's that's that. I've just got to make up that mind, be mind on that in the run or after the start, how hard I do push him out. I'll give you a bit of a warning, and then I'm going to go and try and call Milesy again and, and, and get you. This is going to be a, a really loose. I mean, if it's not already loose, this is a loose edition of Burning Questions, but I'll give you a little warning. <clears throat> it might upset some people. If Bolramski crosses you in that race with little Louie, you won't be three back the poles. You'll be four back the right. poles. Stick with me. Yeah, Danny. and that's, and that's the problem I, yeah, that's yeah. The problem I got. I'll be back in a sec. This is Bernie Questions. You can still hear me. I'm, I'm borrowing your phone. David Moles, unfortunately, uh, Elon Musk said, if you'd like to live in, in for eternity, we have to disembody you. So, unfortunately, there's no David Moles anymore, so he won't be driving or training on Saturday night, but he is with us to still chat about it. And the question we were discussing here, well, you've already answered it. You, you're pretty confident Amore Vita wins that uh, that premier race of the evening on Saturday night? I'm not very – no, I think it will win, but to get past the armour is going to be a massive ask. But I, think, I do think it'll win. But I'm not confident. You reckon Fiamma will be leading? Be leading, especially after pulled so hard last week. Pity on the floppy at the front. Final question and final sponsor here. Pride's Easy Feed, who've been with us for a long period of time and sponsored some very big races for Harness Racing Victoria. Um, they stand as proud supporters of the harness racing industry, which we love, as do I. They have set recipes. I don't. Well, I sort of do, baked beans mostly, and quality ingredients to give the trainer confidence in what they're feeding. So make the switch to Prides and start getting the results you've been chasing. Final question, David Miles, while you're disembodied, does the draw ensure that star celebrity salutes or can her mates talk time and Dana, Dana Mora that is, lay in with their boots? Is this a situation, Dan Malecki and I spoke about this in the Friday form panel, are we looking at this as maybe... Star Celebrity isn't the best of the three. Maybe there's not much between them, but the draw gets her over the line. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think she's a fill-up job. I think it just, it just leads and wins. They all want to take your business. And uh, the others will be too busy chasing their tail. She can just keep rolling sectionals until she's very strong. Dunny, your thoughts on that, Rose? I, 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 I know you can't access the form right now and that I've somehow hurt you in a really profound existential way. <laughs> if, you can, if you can answer the question, it would be lovely. No, I have had a quick look at that one because um, I did remember that one because I'm following out the one. So hopefully the one is too strong. I'm probably not the horse I was and what I thought I was going to be. So, but, yeah, I'll be I'll be thereabouts if I can, um, if it can hold up and be there to the finish. Wouldn't it be great, Moles, if we can clip that little bit up, that Aaron Dunn is not the horse... He was, or that he hoped to be. <laughs> Didn't I say mine? No, you said I'm not the horse. I was. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, well. Is there anybody we need to let know that you're not the horse you were, or that, that you hope to be? Yeah, I'm starting to look at the time, and I'm going to get going here shortly. So. All hurry right. Up. <laughs> All right. Two minutes. Two minutes. Um, Molesy, quickly. So tell me with the Destiny Stride situation, just to clarify, will you be pushing it out to find the front or will you, you be just finding the front regardless? Oh, no, I'll be pushing it out. She, um, I think she's fast enough, but uh, she got out the gate very um, early. Oh, hang on. I'm back. This is, this is, this is actually made it the best. That I'm back. back. I'm back. Will you be pushing it out? I'm this like Lazarus. I'm getting excited. Dunny's got to go to Mildura. Oh, Are you pushing so Destiny Stride out or not? Yeah, I'll be in front and get on. Put it in your multi. Who looks like Diamonds qualified? Uh, if she behaves herself, Barry, one might be a risk. 
She's not the horse she was or that she hoped to be, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> best bet, Dunny, but we'll, we'll get you on your way. What's your best bet? Uh, Storm Rider. That should be one. Malsey? Yeah, Destiny Stride. Yeah, a more Vita for me. Oh, this has been wonderful. Andy is going to have the greatest FOMO of all time when he watches this edition of Burning Questions. How wild it was this been. I know what he's doing. I don't think he'll be, have FOMO at all. After we leave the call, could you give me a call and, and tell me what he's doing, please, Mosey? But you haven't got your phone, Jason. It's uh, it's sitting next to the, the pie warmer at the 7-Eleven. I've got Mick out. I'll call you. Um, au revoir. That's been Burning Questions. Hopefully we found you some winners. And more importantly, I feel... I'm, well, I'm pretty confident we've entertained you. So, goodbye, au revoir, hasta la vega, and enjoy this incredible night of uh, semi-final racing for the Vic Bread Super Series at Melton on Saturday night. Bye-bye.